United States has warned the Houthis to stop attacks on Red Sea vessels or face potential targeted military action. Two deadly explosions went off in Iran, killing at least 84 and injuring 220 people yesterday. The blast went off near the grave of Iranian commander Qasem Soleimani in Kerman. Uh, now, hours after the explosions, more than a dozen countries, led by the United States, issued a warning against the Houthi militants to stop continuing their attacks on the Red Sea. Now, the United States does not believe Israel was behind these explosions and claims the United States was also not responsible either, according to officials. Hmm. Meanwhile, White House National Security Council Strategic Communications Coordinator John Kirby attempted to shut down South Africa's 84-page suit accusing Israel in detail of genocide. When pressed on the matter yesterday, let's watch. South Africa's filed this 84-page lawsuit against Israel accusing them of genocide. Israel says that this is blood libel. Does Washington agree? And where does this put Washington and Pretoria? We find this uh, submission meritless, counterproductive, and uh, completely without any basis in fact whatsoever. But Intercept reporter Prem Thakar wrote on X earlier, Kirby refused to comment on whether Israel was violating international law, saying he was, quote, not an international lawyer. But here, he freely remarks that the accusations of Israel committing international law violations is completely without any basis or fact whatsoever. Meanwhile, Ryan Grimm asked State Department spokesman Max Miller whether the statements made by Israeli Neset members went against American demands that Israel not displace Palestinians. Let's watch his response to that. You know, had similar statements. Uh, you both said in your statements, quote, there should be no mass displacement of Palestinians from Gaza. Given that you both had the same word for word statement, it seems like there was thought put into that. Why, why use the word should there? There should be no mass displacement. Would you be willing to make a more definitive comment? Like a, there must. There, there must not be. Yeah. No, there. And then I, to get to Ben Gavir's response, that's, which I'm sure you saw, he posted on Twitter, with all due respect, we are not another star on the American flag. The United States is our best friend, but first of all, we will do what is best for the state of Israel. The emigration of hundreds of thousands from Gaza will allow the residents of the enclave or the envelope to return home and live in safety and, protect, and to protect the IDF soldiers. Any response? to Ben Gavir's public response to you. So certainly Israel is a sovereign country that does make its own decisions. There is no dispute about that. Um, the point of our conf of, of the statement that I made yesterday was that the comments that Ben Gavir and Minister Smotrich have made are in direct contradiction of Israeli government policy, as has been rep represented to us by multiple Israeli government officials, including the prime minister himself. Um, so. Uh, I'm not surprised that he continues to double down and make those statements, um, but they are not only in contradiction with um, uh, United States policy and what we think is in the best interests of the Israeli people, the Palestinian people, the broader region, and ultimately stability in the world, but they are in direct contradiction of his own government's policy, uh, and we believe those statements should stop. So remember the posture of what Mac Matt Miller is responding to there. Remember that Israel's finance minister, Smotrich, and also the minister of national security, Ben Gavir, both made statements in the last few days, which seem to nod pretty unambiguously toward a goal to removing all of the population of Gaza from Gaza. A synonym for that might be ethnic cleansing. So uh, Smotrich said uh, that, um, uh, 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 suggested that the war in Gaza could result in the resettlement of the Palestinian people. Ben Gavir echoed those statements, saying it was a, quote, an opportunity to concentrate on encouraging the migration of the residents of Gaza. We cannot withdraw from any territory we are in in the Gaza Strip. Not only do I not rule out Jewish settlement there, I believe it is also an important thing. Okay, so those were the statements. Those statements were perceived, I think, by the U.S. State Department as so explicit in a call to do what both our State Department and Israel have denied that they have been, that was the goal of the siege on Gaza, which is to do ethnic cleansing, that even our State Department was compelled to put out a statement saying that we condemn that. In response, Ben Gavir, as you heard Ryan Grimm just read back at him, doubled down and said, no, we're going to do what we're going to do. We're a sovereign nation. Now, it, what's remarkable, in my view, about Miller's response there is that he says, he seems to say, well, Ben Gavir and Smortrich, those are outliers. And this has been the line that's now coming out of Israel, that they do not stand for the policy goals of Israel 
as a state, despite them both being very senior officials, obviously, in Israel. And I think what's especially galling about it is that when you look at Kirby's statements where he says the uh, South African ICJ petition is meritless, if you were to read the South African ICJ petition, it includes multiple pages of quotes from people senior in Israeli the Israeli government, including, of course, Benjamin Netanyahu announcing intentionality of various war crimes, whether they be collective punishment, whether they be um, uh, 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 ethnic cleansing uh, and the like. So it is it's difficult. I think there's what we're seeing now is an increasing tension between the explicit statements of senior Israeli officials, the Israeli government, and the U.S. who's still holding this line saying, well, we're all working toward a two-state solution. It's, it's getting increasingly difficult, I think, for them to sell that message. Yeah, I, my ears pricked up at the, well, we're not the 51st state comment. I'm like, oh, okay, fair enough, but— That's not what Akeem Jeffries says. He says Israel's the sixth borough of New York. Okay, well, <laughs> we don't have to give you money, then, is, again, where I come down. Mm. I don't really—we're <laughs> apart on this, because I don't—I'm not as interested in nitpicking what Israel's doing, but I also don't want to be on the hook for it and don't think we have to fund it. Um, I, like, I'm reminded of someone—maybe it was Zaid Jelani or someone like that—posted some video footage from a hearing, like— 30, 40 years ago of um, uh, James Baker, who I believe was Secretary of State under Reagan or Bush, the first Bush, um, you know, being grilled uh, by a by a pro-Israel Democratic congressman on uh, on, on uh, Baker had had put out a statement saying they should stop Israel should stop doing expansion into the West Bank and we're not going to you know we and, and I think opposing giving some emergency funding to them or something, being like, look, we we already gave them all this funding, we're not going to give them even more funding. When we said don't do this, and they said they're going to do this anyway, um, that it used to be uh, there, there used to be more um, combativeness from from our government. For some, well, if we're going to give you something, you have to stop doing these things that we think are actually going to make us unsafer because they're going to um, annoy the uh, the the Palestinians, the Arab population, of which we have some and some small number of those people have terrorist connections, and that could backfire on us, um, is not the kind of conversation you hear anymore, that, mm -hmm. we, that there would be any strings attached to the, to the funding we give. Again, I don't, it's not the strings that matter to me. It's I would just not fund it anyway, and then you know, they can work it out themselves. They're a very rich country. They don't need our funding. It seems ridiculous that we should be on, on the hook for it. Oh, and you can but, also um, say that they're a very rich country because they've for almost the entire duration of their existence, been receiving more, more funding, funding from the United States country. than any other country. Yeah. Um, it, it is uh, worth noting, to your point also, that folks across the political spectrum have been, frankly, giving even Ronald Reagan some credit for, in the um, aftermath or in, in the context of the 1982 war between Lebanon and Israel, where Liz Israel uh, inflicted an incredible amount of casualties on Lebanon and occupied southern Lebanon. Even Ronald Reagan felt compelled to pick up the phone and say, enough is enough. And when he did that, Israel stopped its bombardment of that country. So people are asking the question, if even Reagan, who is certainly no lefty humanitarian, were will was willing to say enough is enough in that context, why are we now at 22,000 dead people in Gaza? And Biden is standing behind these increasingly inflammatory statements coming All out right. of the Israeli I, that's government. That's what I was going to say. Maybe, we don't know if a different president is capable of influencing them, but Joe Biden certainly isn't. So, Or is, is certainly unwilling to, I would say. I would I would not strip his agency. I think that he could, but he is unwilling maybe to. Maybe they just don't take him seriously. It, <laughs> and, and because... And because Kirby just wrote off the substance of the ICJ report, I think it's worth reading just a couple of examples. Again, it's an 84-page report. There's at least three pages of simply quotes from senior members of the Israeli government announcing um, what is used in, in a, a case like this to establish intent. That's usually the hardest part of proving genocide, that it is not just a, a consequence of war, but an actual genocidal intent. To the ethnic cleansing point, Deputy Speaker of the Knesset and member of the Foreign Affairs Security Committee said on October 7th, uh, now we all have one common goal, erasing the Gaza Strip from the face of the earth. Those who are unable will be replaced. Um, you have, obviously, the familiar comments about uh, uh, Amalek from uh, the prime minister. Uh, he said on October 13th, we are striking our enemies with unprecedented might. 
Um, uh, the, they understand, our soldiers understand the scope of the mission and stand ready to defeat the bloodthirsty monsters who have risen against Israel to destroy us. Um, we have st statements from uh, President uh, Isaac Herzog, uh, not distinguishing between militants and civilians. Uh, you have the statement saying that we're going to uh, impose a complete siege on Gaza, and on and on and on and on and on. And so much of this was just tweeted out entering into the historical record. And it's going to be very interesting to see how Israel is, man is going to manage to fight these charges in the International uh, Court of Justice, which they are planning to do. Yeah, I would like to um, touch on the Houthi rebels before sure. we wrap this segment. Uh, I saw um, um, a map the other day of, uh, or like heat signature type thing, or lights of uh, all the ships now going all the way around Africa rather than taking the Red Sea cut off. And I think you can't help but wonder, and I saw a lot, a lot of people on Twitter saying this, like, you know, regardless of what is the correct way actually to handle this situation, you know, we pay, the American tax taxpayer pays for this giant military and all these ships and all these planes. And here we have a handful of not particularly well-equipped equi rebels who have totally shut down this waterway. And like, what is the, again, I'm not saying what we should do, but what is, on some level, what is even the point of paying for and having this super impressive Navy armed forces where a thing like this happens and we're not even going to do anything about it? We're just going to take the long way around because it's inconvenient? Well, I, I think, think that's unsatisfying I think to the, a lot of the people. The opposite <laughs> way to, to, the flip side of that question is, is that it's very revealing that the purpose of us having this enormous military is not protect, to protect American rights and freedoms, but to have complete control over international commerce in this way. Now, we have said, the West has said the Houthis will be punished for their solidarity with the Palestinian people. It's worth noting that they have not done any violence or killed anybody in the in the context of their blockade. Well, they've taken Ten of a them ship have hostage. Been killed. They have been saying anybody who anybody can pass through as long as you're not going to Israel and supporting their siege on Gaza and the ongoing genocide on Gaza. I would like to think that the global community would participate in that kind of an action since it's exactly that kind of economic pressure that led to the end of horrific apartheid in South Africa. Instead, it's a relatively limited Arab coalition who are willing to stand with the people of Palestine in solidarity at this moment. I actually um, spoke to a Middle Eastern uh, journalist and expert on my podcast today to, to delve more into how this alliance that he is terming um, an axis of resistance has come together after years of sometimes being on different sides of these issues and the leaders of these countries many of them aligning with Western interests for economic reasons and trying to put together coalitions with the West and Israel and the Middle East. Now, all of that is out the window because as much as the leaders, the elites in those countries might want to continue with those lucrative uh, arrangements with the West, their populations are furious at what they see as the inhumane um, and, and, frankly, ethnically motivated harms that are being done to Palestinians with impunity. So, I mean, it's a good question for the American public. You know, do we think that we should have and pay so much money to a military so that we can bomb a Houthi blockade, hypothetically, out of existence and protect shipping routes that enable a genocide to continue? Or should we actually participate in a global society where we are ourselves also responsible and beholden to international rule of law? And that if we want our ships to be able to pass, we also have to respect international law and that Israel also has to respect international law. I vote blow them out of the water, but I would also cease all of the payments to Israel. So there you go. More rising right after this. We need to fund a military to do that.